Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this session we'll be going through part two of creating coordinate systems in turning and mill turning. Now before I continue, let's take a look over here at the bottom, and I'll bring this out towards the middle over here. We have our cam views. Besides our normal uh, milling cam views as we have here, we also have our turning cam views isometric. For instance, if I were to use this, you'd see exactly how it would be sitting on the machine. And we have the cam ZX axis showing it exactly how we would see it from the frontal view as if, we, as if we were looking on the machine. And you'll note that this is the view that I have to have my sketches in. This was drawn in the front view of the part itself. Now, to create my material boundary, there are several ways I can create them. If I go into material boundary, I have 2D boundary, 3D model, and cylinder. I'll start off with 2D boundary. 2D boundary is simply choosing the line that I've created for my material boundary. If I were to click on define, it brings me to the area where I have to define my chain. I'll simply say define chain. Simply pick that one curve and the moment I say OK, you'll note that it automatically drop down to the center of the part and I have material boundary now for that particular part itself. I'll simply accept that and I've created my material boundary. Now the other ways I can create my material boundary is simply instead of choosing 2G, I can 2D boundary, I can just choose 3D model. 3D model is good if I have a part that came from a casted part or previously turned part that's bigger than the size and I simply choose that model as my uh, stock model. We also have the option called cylinder. In cylinder what I simply do is click on the part and what happens is right now it'll automatically build the stock material according to the part itself as shown here and I can have my offsets set over here. I can say I want to have an offset of a half a millimeter, for instance, on the right hand Z side. I can say I want to have it 20 millimeters on the left hand side. And my external to be 2 millimeters up. For this, I do not need that 2D sketch that I created before that one line. But it is important to note that my material must at least touch my uh, chuck that I have to uh, create afterwards. Now we also have another option over here called internal diameter. I can actually create material that has a hole in the middle. Say I would create one that has a diameter of 20 millimeters. My material now will be only up until this area over here representing a hole for 20 millimeters of the part itself. That's another way to create the uh, boundary material. Simply say OK and my boundary material has been created. Now create our spindles, my main spindle and my back spindle. To make this easier to understand I'll put it in the XZ uh, cam view and I'll start by choosing main spindle. My main spindle is going to be this box that I created here. So I'll define the chain by simply clicking create the chain and that is my spindle. Now my back spindle will be the exact same thing. Simply define the chain on this box over here and this area over here, simply create the chain. And there we have our two spindles created for our part. I would now like to create my target model. Now, when I create my target model, I'd like to choose the option of creating an envelope 
around the part. An envelope will actually give me the exact shape as a sketch around the part itself, which I can use later on for creating geometries in my part. I'll simply click on envelope. And now when I create my target model, I'll simply say define my 3D model, click on the part, accept it, and what's happening right now is actually building the envelope around the part itself. If I want, I can say show on model. You can see that's my model itself. I can also say show, and you can actually see the model that was built. That's my part. I'll simply say OK. And you'll also note now that there is an actual 3D sketch created on the part according to the exact shape of the part. That's my envelope right there. And I can use that later on, as I said, for creating uh, geometries on the part itself for turning. At this point, I simply do save and exit, and we are now ready to start machining our part. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.